Dylan, how did you find out about this software architecture and who invited you here? I was invited by an old friend of mine, Martin Kulov, and uh, I've been uh, working with him uh, and uh, we, we, we worked around uh, a couple of events and conferences in, a few years ago, uh, some, some sort of five years ago uh, last time. And uh, so I, I didn't hear, did hear from him for, for quite a few years now and uh, recently he invited me to an event, the first event of a, a new association called the Association of Software Engineers. And well, I actually wanted to know more, a lot more about this initiative, which is not so uncommon in the world, but not in the in the form, or I mean, as far as I know, not in the form that the uh, ASAE Association is taking here in, in Bulgaria and, and Sofia in particular. So actually, it, it's surprising to see how you know the power that people that join together. Uh, colleagues, uh, potential colleagues, uh, people having the same job or willing to do the same uh, uh, kind of job can join together uh, to form an association and this is beneficial to all of them uh, and not just to them uh, but to the companies they represent, uh, the colleagues they may have and also the people around uh, the country that can grow up just following uh, the guidelines that all together the software engineers can arrange. And in fact, the way in which uh, I understand that this uh, kind of association works is very nice and very powerful because it, it, it aims at, being, at bringing together uh, people and uh, in such a way everybody can share their own experiences, uh, uh, everyone can bring uh, uh, some sort of contribution and experts uh, in the group uh, uh, can, uh, can extrapolate patterns, uh, common practices, best practices and share these kind of things in a digestible format uh, with the members. So everyone joins, everyone uh, learns more, more in terms of best practices for running and growing their own local communities uh, and also to become uh, more and more open to guidelines and best practice of the profession and in the long run this is my expectation but I think this can, it's something that can be mathematically you know uh, uh, proven uh, it takes it to growing uh, cultivating I would like to say you know like, like beans like things that we like like vegetables cultivating uh, a new generation of uh, uh, experts, uh, of professionals at least, uh, that can only do uh, well for, uh, for, for the IT uh, success in this country and I really hope that it's not limited to this country but the model can be exported to other countries in East Europe or why not in, in all over the world. You mentioned the association, the association of Software Engineers here in Bulgaria. Here, we know that you travel a lot, so have you seen such associations in other countries? And how do you think they compare with this one? But frankly, uh, I don't think that I ever had a chance to meet and work closely with a similar uh, associations. The idea of people who form an association to share uh, uh, the benefits of being a group instead of being several distinct individuals. Uh, this is a general pattern that in particular I've seen applied uh, uh, several times more in a business scenario. So I've seen several times people uh, forming a company rather than an association but just to attract more business to, to, to get more money essentially. Um, the purpose of this association is not primarily I guess uh, money and business but it's just growing people so he has a social relevance uh, that is what really makes this kind of activity uh, very very enjoyable and valuable uh, from whatever perspective uh, you want to see. I do remember that in my country I'm Italian uh, years ago there was uh, a, a, a very shy and light lightweight attempt to build a, a similar kind of thing for reasons that are beyond me that never worked uh, I don't know actually, I cannot say if it was because of lack of commitment or uh, uh, because it was just not very well received uh, or because it was the cost of the fee for associating, I really don't know what, what, what was the reason. Fact is that uh, yeah, it, it was in the news, it was in the, in the common talk uh, um, among uh, developers uh, but it never happened. Uh, um, there are, internationally speaking, there are worldwide associations of engineers uh, that more or less uh, expect to, to, to have the same role. But I think that what makes uh, uh, probably successful, and I wish that 
this association is that it operates, it starts operating locally in a small group of people with a very, very, uh, a very, very strong focus on the specific reality, the specific people, the specific needs of the territory and the country. That is uh, the, the winning factor for uh, the Association of Software Engineers in Bulgaria. So, you mentioned this early in your first reply, but my question, my question now is, do you think it makes sense to have such a generally themed conference about software engineers and software architects when there are so many technologies and there is a perceived segregation between people writing software? Um, well, I believe that you mentioned... Uh, no, I'm sorry, because I, I'm not supposed to say. Okay. I believe that uh, architecture and uh, software development and technologies uh, are uh, orthogonal things. They work together, they are strictly related to each other, but they are different things. So a conference uh, uh, like, for example, the, the, the first meeting, the first public event organized by the Association of Software Engineers uh, in Sofia uh, is focused on, uh, on architecture and, and has any sort of skills around software architecture, hard skills uh, of patterns uh, um, and kind of technologies and soft skills of how to manage uh, a team, uh, how to interact and communicate uh, with customers, how to do design, how to understand a business, how to build a software model for a given business domain. These are some sort of soft skills, but which are fundamental for any sort of software architect or, and for any, any individual who uh, likes to be one day a successful architect. Uh, this is a very, very, very specific, very, very strong focus. Uh, and it makes sense as long as uh, there is a lack of this kind of skills, hard or soft, in a given territory. And uh, this is again what makes uh, the association extremely powerful and beneficial to all members. And I invite, for what that matters, uh, everybody who can, uh, can, can, um, can hear, can see this interview, to try to join it to learn more uh, about the association because uh, yeah, it's beneficial to all members. It's the power of a group of individuals uh, sharing a common goal. In general, speaking in general of conferences and the topics they cover, should they be you know, generalistic? Should they cover as much as possible? Should they focus on technologies or on different kind of things? Uh, I believe that we live in an era of software in which uh, a lot of information, nitty gritty details, uh, uh, technologies, uh, just at the source code level is widely available. Uh, what, we re what we really lack and um, and, and can hardly find elsewhere is uh, the ability to group those things together to you know massage these pieces of information into a digestible structure that can be easily consumed uh, and we need expertise we need superior expertise the ability to look at technologies from some sort of 10,000 feet uh, having a bird's eye view on the on the technology see how they relate to each other, see the topology of those uh, technologies and then extrapolate patterns uh, and uh, guidance uh, uh, rules uh, to share. So technologies, uh, information about technologies is widely available. You just Google, you just visit Stack Overflow and you find whatever you want. You can even now type questions, how do I do this? And you get an answer that for the most part is absolutely relevant. Uh, you cannot do the same. Well, what is the best architecture? for my system or given my system, uh, what should I do to achieve more scalability? If you try asking this kind of questions uh, uh, to an automated tool like Google or a search engine, uh, you can even find uh, posts or articles or Q&A sites uh, uh, that give you something that more or less addresses the question, but you will never go in the necessary level of depth. And this is why events where people convey and bring their own first-hand information. This is what makes these events useful. And the more they are focused uh, on a particular aspect of software architecture, in this case, uh, the more they bring benefit. Bene benef they, they bring benefit to, uh, to, to people. How do you accommodate the roles of an author of big in-depth books 
with the role of a presenter at big conferences, talking to a lot of people? This is a tough question. How can I work out in the same life uh, being an author, a book author, a course author, and being a consultant, being a professional, and uh, being a presenter? Uh, well, I, I think that every aspect, everything I do in my life uh, plays a role. So these are three aspects of my career and my life that uh, feed each other. So the experience I mature, I mean, in first place, first and foremost, I love writing, period. That's it. It's always been like this since the very, you know, first days of my life when I was in an elementary school, I loved writing. Um, and when I figured out that I could even be paid for writing, that would have been just absolutely fantastic. It was the best day of my life. So, I love writing. This said, I, I, I try to, you know, making books out of my uh, writing, uh, okay, let's say ability and, uh, and pleasure. And uh, as I write, uh, that is also a way for me to let uh, patterns, uh, uh, guidelines, uh, to emerge out of technologies because I write about technologies but when you when I when I when you write you typically tend to build a story uh, to make a story of uh, uh, even, even of a technology that you present to people and this is uh, a fantastic way for you as an author to learn more about the, the, the technology itself and this comes useful when you start being a consultant, a professional, building software for, uh, for, for companies, for customers, or even for your own company. At the same time, uh, when you mature concrete experiences on, on the field, in the real world, that becomes a fuel for uh, presentations. So you have a lot more to say to people, but even when you go to a conference and present uh, on it, you know, generic uh, argument uh, and you are not expected to put there any real-world experience uh, it comes natural did I say that I also love speaking okay so uh, when, when you're there on the stage and you love speaking it comes natural to reinvent completely the talk and put their personal experiences coming from the real world and this closes the circle because you I write what I learned writing helps me writing software and what I have learned writing software help me presenting and what I present when I present that's another story I build on the fly which helps me for the next book so that's how it works it's a circle the circle of profession all right then. thank you very much for this interview we are once again very glad to have you here do you have any closing words to our viewers I think I love Bulgaria. Uh, I mean, last time, I've been here before this time for probably three or four other times, uh, but I never realized uh, how beautiful uh, Sofia is. Uh, before this time, before I came, uh, I you know, tried to learn as much as possible about the city, and I figured out something, that, something about architecture of the city, which is uh, full of uh, 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 buildings, uh, each uh, you know, presenting a different aspect of different types of architecture. So being here for the architecture days, uh, having uh, found uh, three fantastic sunny days uh, to view the architecture of the city has been really, uh, well, not a bad experience. Thanks a lot. Wow, okay. That was a nice interview. <laughs> Thank you.